meet God where you're at, not where you wish you were. I think the reason that so many of us find prayer boring is because we don't actually pray, we edit. We edit our feelings and our thoughts about God and we just give God the stuff that we feel like is okay and right and pious. Don't do, that's a way to kill your prayer life and kill your enjoyment of the Father's company. Just wherever you're at, doubt, you're not even sure if you believe in God, burned off by the church and turned off and angry and bitter, bored and you think prayer is boring, over busy, stressed out, anxious, you don't feel like you have the time to do any of this stuff, you pray for an hour every morning, just wherever you're at, meet God there. Yeah, you know, we have this, I grew up in a church tradition that I'm sure was similar enough to yours to where personal relationship with Jesus was like, that was a cliche. Yeah. And yeah, that's not a phrase used anywhere in the library of scripture, but it's used all the time in the kind of evangelical Western world. And I have no problem with it. I actually don't think people have any idea the depth or the gravity or the weight of what is in that statement, a personal relationship with Jesus. There's so much more there. Mm -hmm. And I think actually a lot of us are scared of a personal relationship with Jesus, of an actually open, honest, in-depth, transparent. So when you think about this idea, okay, God is a name, meaning he's a person, not a human being, not a male or a female, but a person mm -hmm. who wants to relate to you, wants to be in relationship with you as a father to a child. Baseline mm -hmm. emotion is compassion, but yet he's God. I mean, you're not dealing with a bro across the street. Like, yeah. he's God. Yeah. Um, like, one of the main implications is, I think, for your prayer life. Yeah. And I think a lot of us, when we pray, we pray to an idea or a doctrine in a theology textbook yeah. more than to a person relationship, or we pray to this angry caricature to appease, yeah. or to this kind of cosmic Santa Claus that yeah. doesn't even care about sin, that just we want health and wealth from, or yeah. whatever. And I think, you know, one of the great secrets that we don't talk about in the church is how boring prayer is for a lot of people. Totally. And, and how few people actually pray in the first place yeah. and don't enjoy it and feel like they sit down to pray and they just kind of, their mind goes all over the place and totally. they feel distracted and they feel bored I remember and they get nothing out of it. At our old church, I, there was a rumor, and I don't, still don't know if it's true, probably was it, that our pastor would pray four hours a day. Mm -hmm. And I remember, this is Pastor Willie George, Church on the Move. This okay. is, I have no idea if that's true. That's what people used to say. And if, I remember- If there was a rumor about me that said that, I wouldn't correct it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, could be. Maybe. <laughs> Discipline of secrecy. But honestly, I when I heard that, I my first thought was what could you say for four, for four hours? hours? And one of, the, one of the things that I, and I know you, you're in the same boat of like, of spiritual formation, yes. admire Dallas Willard, is that so much of prayer isn't what we say as much as it is a conversation yes. and intimacy, like yeah. a spiritual intimacy with God. Like you Even can- what we feel before God. You can, can you pray for an hour and never say a thing? Absolutely. I so think, tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, I think... Yeah, I, I agree. I, but I think that has a lot to do with what you're saying yes. here. I mean, one definition of prayer that I love is just whole person orientation to God. Yeah. You know, when Paul writes, pray without ceasing in his letter to the church in Thessalonica, what exactly does he mean? Does he literally mean pray 24 hours a day? In which case you'd start, and even if you press through the boredom, mm -hmm. what you make it to day three, four, and then you would die. You know. Yeah. So I think he's not. I think what he's saying is living with your whole person orientation to God. What Brother Lawrence, you know, called the practice of the presence of God, which, by the way, is the the most widely read book outside of the Bible, written by a dishwasher, uneducated dishwasher in the back of the it. monastery. Tell me about that, that book. Yeah, if you, if you don't know Brother Lawrence, 16th century Parisian. We'll we'll keep this tangent coming back. 16th century Parisian monk who devoted his life, dishwasher in the back of a mon monastery, yeah. not a priest, not a, uh, not a cleric, dishwasher, devoted his life to what he called the practice of the presence of God, what Paul called prayer, what Jesus called abiding in the vine. And, uh, and he basically wanted to spend every waking moment in the presence of God. Yeah. And so he devoted his life to this and became transformed by it. By the end of his life, word was out. People would travel from all over Europe, write letters from all over Europe to watch this man in the back of a kitchen for a monastery with a bunch of bachelors, you know, yeah. cook dinner, clean up dinner and just his joy. And at the end of his life, his letters were put together into a book. It's really more of a pamphlet than a book. You can read it in about 20 or 30 minutes. And he just has so many beautiful things to say about what he calls the practice of the presence of God. Life spent, I think Willard would say, in the Father's company. You know, yeah. Willard has that great quote. So Willard quote actually that I have on the inside of my closet wall that I read every single morning, or most mornings before I go to work. 
where he just says that the first and most basic thing that we can and must do is to set God before our minds. Mm -hmm. And he writes that our part in practicing the presence of God is to direct and redirect our minds constantly to God. So as you're driving to work in the morning, you're stuck in traffic, you're at the office or on the job site, or you're raising three little kids, or you're retired and you're going about your day, or you're at the golf course, or you know, you're eating lunch, whatever it is for you, just to direct and redirect your mind constantly to God. And then he has this metaphor of how a compass, the, the needle, if you think of a compass, it always goes back to north, yeah, right? And, absolutely. And, and the goal is that as you practice the presence of God, as you organize your life around the spiritual disciplines, that your mind always goes back to God. It's like yeah. your mind and imagination is like the needle on a compass. Anytime you just, you're stuck at that traffic light <laughs> and you just get a quick second or there's a little lull in your inbox between emails or you know, your two-year-old's asleep for yeah. 10 minutes or whatever, and you just have a little mental break, all of a sudden your mind just goes back to God. Wouldn't it that's be great? prayer. Yeah, and that's sometimes, great. And sometimes prayer for mm -hmm. me is just feeling in God's presence yeah. and just telling God how I feel. I'm sad right now. I'm anxious right now. I'm happy right now. I'm grateful right now. I'm angry right now. Feeling in God's presence. You know, intercession, asking God to do things is one type of prayer. It's a beautiful type of prayer. It's one of many. Prayer is just relationship with the Father. Wow. So how do you actually do relationship with Jesus? Well, it's not that different from how I do relationship with my wife. A lot of it comes down to rhythms. Yeah. So every Friday morning, I have Friday off, our kids are in school, we go on a brunch date. Yeah. And we have that anchor point to look forward to. Yeah. And in the summer when our kid's out of school, it's Thursday night and my parents watch the kids. Every night after dinner when we put the kids to bed, I sit and chat with my wife on the couch. You yeah. know, Once a week we have Sabbath where we set aside an entire day just to rest and worship and be together as a family. My relationship with my wife we sleep next to each other in the same bed we you know what i mean that we yeah. eat meals together we so have it's like what kind of family. rhythms do you have with god then? yes so i do relationship my my i cal my calendar is really the way that i do relationship with my wife so that might I, sound cold and calculating no, i think it's great everything comes down to rhythm yeah everything. totally yeah and do you, do you ever do that with god do you put like i'm going to pray at yes, friday at three yes. o'clock or whatever and that and that's not to limit my yeah. relationship with god you to have, those it's moments. the minimum you're going to have at least that it's much. again brother lawrence called it the practice of the presence of god i'm yeah. practicing i'm training and teaching my mind to go back to God, yeah. go back to God. So when I wake up and I set my alarm and I specifically don't turn on my iPhone until a set time after I've read my Bible and prayed, mm -hmm. I have that discipline there, but the discipline is a means to an end. Mm -hmm. Like the end isn't, oh, I from six to 7.30, it was just me and Jesus, like who cares? Yeah. The end is I wanna have a relationship with Jesus yeah. and I wanna become an unhurried soul and I wanna be transformed and I wanna be full of the spirit of Jesus and the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace and patience. I want this to permeate my personhood all through the day. And so I have a discipline, 6 to 7.30, every, you know, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, totally. And I have Sabbath on the weekend, and I have once a month, I take a day just for silence and solitude. And these are disciplines, but they're all a means to an end. And the end is not the discipline. The end is relationship to Jesus and transformation into his image. And so Jesus showed us how to relate to the Father by how he lived. He would get up early and pray. He would Sabbath on the weekend. He would live simply. Jesus was not out buying and selling all the time. He didn't have 50 different pairs of shoes and yeah. four different cars and this collection <laughs> and that collection. Yeah. He lived very simply, clothes on his back. He enjoyed things. He enjoyed a good <laughs> meal. He enjoyed a good glass of wine. He, you know, at the end of the day when he was crucified, they tore his garment apart. It was a nice purple garment. Like he, he had things. He wasn't yeah. anti-thing. Yeah. But he lived so simply yeah. and so gratefully. And, and that's just one example. He lived in community, not by himself. He'd regularly eat meals with other people that would pray to the Father. And so his, we see in Jesus how to do relationship with the God that is called Father. So you've got these, so, you know, I've, you've got this, these first two things. Yeah, slow down. Slow down. Simplify around the spiritual disciplines. And number three? Just make abiding in the vine the number one goal in my life. So I just figured, John chapter 15. These all seem like almost the same side of, uh, different sides of the same Kind of three ways of saying the same yeah. thing. But there's an order. Mm -hmm. If I don't slow down, yeah. I can't practice the spiritual disciplines because I'm too busy and too much of a rush. That's right. That's good. And if I don't practice the spiritual disciplines, then I can't retrain myself in a world of iPhone and Wi-Fi and distraction and noise and traffic and three little children and a job and this and that. I can't retrain myself 
to go back to God in my conscious awareness, like all through the day, and just to enjoy his company. And I'm telling you, the longer I follow, I'm 37, I've been following Jesus as long as I can remember. The best, in my humble opinion, the best part of following Jesus is Jesus. Yes. And I, and I know that sounds like a cliche and it's like a little trite. It's not, it's a great word. But I genuinely mean, like my, there's a lot I love about Jesus. I love being used of God. I love seeing yeah. people come to faith and I love teaching the Bible and I love mm-hmm. lots of things I love. I love, but my favorite thing is just to sit in the Father's company. You want to call that prayer? You want to call that sitting on my couch first thing in the morning with a cup of coffee and just feeling in God's presence. Mm-hmm. That's on, It's the highlight of my day. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.